Manila Traffic Unit to implement road closures and rerouting until Wednesday for the annual Quiapo Traslacion. Ito ho yung nakikita nating paraan para magkaroon ng panghil yung clearing operations namin. Ini-small-small ini lang ho tayo. Illegally park in Metro Manila takes effect today. And uh, PNP Chief Oscar Albayalde relieves intel officers who allegedly leak information on the profiling of the members of Alliance of Concerned Teachers. Good evening. Several roads in the city of Manila will be closed to traffic until Wednesday amid ongoing preparations for the annual Catholic Traslacion in Quiapo. Monoxon tells us why. An advisory has been issued by the Manila Police District Traffic Enforcement Unit to guide motorists on routes to take to reach their destinations, as some roads leading to Quiapo will be closed to give way for the annual Traslacion. The procession of Catholic devotees will be held on Wednesday, January 9. But as early as now, several roads in Manila have already been closed to give way to activities related to the Traslacion. Starting 11 a.m. onwards, the southbound lane of Quezon Boulevard in Quiapo from A. Mendoza in Fogoso to Plaza Miranda and the westbound lane of España Boulevard from P. Campa until Lerma Street will be closed to give way to the procession. All vehicles coming from España going to Ross Boulevard or Taft Avenue should turn right to P. Campa, straight to Fogoso to their destination. Dakatigbak Drive, South Drive and Independence Road will also be closed beginning Tuesday at 5 in the morning. For vehicles coming from A. Bonifacio, they can go straight to Ross Boulevard to their destination. Motorists from TM Kalaw and Ross Boulevard can use Ross Boulevard going to their destination. A single lane in Katigbak Road will be accessible for those going to Manila and H2O Hotel. More roads will be closed on Wednesday from 12 a.m. onwards including MacArthur, Jones and Quezon Bridges as well as Katigbak Drive to TM Kalaw in Ross Boulevard and both lanes of Quezon Boulevard near Quiapo, Manila. Meanwhile, Traslacion organizers reminded Catholic devotees joining the event to heed advisories and to refrain from climbing on the carriage during procession. Sa ngayon, ang pinaka-challenge talaga ay yung ating mga deboto. Yung sana po ay yung, yung madisiplina sila at talagang matutong makinig doon sa mga panawagan at pakiusap para mas maging maayos talaga yung posisyon. Yung ugali ng isang deboto ay hindi niya hanga din na may tapakan para lamang makaakyat ka sa andas. Disiplina, huwag mag-aaway-away, huwag magmumuruhan at huwag magsusuntukan. Meanwhile, the Philippine National Police said there is a possibility that cell phone signals will be switched off around the Quiapo area to prevent lawless elements from sowing terror. PNP will also step up its security measures in processional routes, though they are yet to monitor any threats. The Philippine Coast Guard, for its part, will monitor the Manila Bay and the back of the Quirino Grandstand, as well as the Jones, MacArthur, and Quezon Bridges. Mon Hoxon, UNTV News and Rescue, Manila. The prices of petroleum products are set to go up on Tuesday. Oil firm says the price of gasoline will increase by 80 centavos per liter, diesel by 70 centavos, while kerosene by 40 centavos per liter. The oil companies, however, clarified that the adjustment is due to the movement of oil prices in the international market and is not yet an effect of the implementation of the second branch of UL excise taxes under the Tax Reform for Acceleration and Inclusion or Train Law. The Metropolitan Manila Development Authority or MMDA has apprehended nearly 60 violators on the first day of its implementation of higher illegal parking fines. Vincent Arboleda tells us why. Personnel from the Metropolitan Manila Development Authority swept down the service road of Ross Boulevard in line with the agency's new initiative against illegal parking. Several motorists complained because the amount of penalty was indeed high not only for unauthorized parking but other traffic violations as well. Sana uh, wag naman ganun ka taas ma'am kasi katulad namin mga driver ma'am syempre magpapareceive kami sa mga ano nang sakay ng gobyerno tapos walang mga parking yung mga yan eh paano naman yung mga driver di kawawa. Wala pong magagawa eh ma'am eh. Hindi sumunod lang po talaga eh. Kaya lang nagkataon lang po talaga na ano. Di-deliver lang naman po para. Ano? Ano, 
ma- mabigat po yun no? kasi gastusin po rin yan dagdag gastos Aside from unattended vehicles, MMDA personnel also issued tickets for driverless vehicles illegally parked along the service road. Based on MMDA Regulation No. 18-008, attended but illegally parked vehicles will incur a fine of 1,000 pesos from the previous 200 pesos. Meanwhile, fines for unattended but illegally parked vehicles has been raised to 2,000 pesos from the previous 500 pesos. For road obstruction, the penalty has been raised to 1,000 pesos from the previous 150 pesos. For violation of the yellow lane policy, the penalty is now 1,000 pesos from the previous 500 pesos. The implementation of higher penalty for illegally parked vehicles has been deferred in December to give motorists enough time to adjust. MMDA's spokesperson Celine Pialago explains that this is the right time to impose more discipline among motorists and to eliminate illegally parked vehicles, which is one of the major cause of traffic congestion in Metro Manila. Yung clearing operations namin, ini, ini is small is small lang ho tayo two years ago sa tuwing nagsasagawa tayo ng clearing operations. 300, 500, bariya para sa iilang mga motoristang may kaya sa buhay, lalo na ho yung mga private. As of today, the MMDA has apprehended 57 motorists under the higher penalties on illegal parking. Apprehended drivers may pay the amount due at any buy-in center or at the MMDA office within seven days from the day of apprehension. Vincent Arboleda, UNTV News and Rescue, Philippines. Philippine National Police Director General Oscar Albayalde has ordered the relief of three intelligence officers who allegedly leaked the memorandum calling for the profiling and inventory of educators who are members of the Alliance of Concerned Teachers or ACT. Albayalde says he did not sign such memorandum and that its leakage has caused unwanted concerns from ACT members. The BNP chief adds that the memorandum may have been issued to monitor ACT. Albayalde says the relief order covers three intelligence officers from Manila Police District, Quezon City and Zambales Police. But as far as I'm concerned, wala akong pinirmahan na ganyan na sinasabi na ano. Although sabi nga natin, itong profiling, this is not profiling. This has been uh, part of uh, our uh, intelligence monitoring lang naman ito. Kung talagang sila ay very proud dun sa pagiging uh, member ng uh, ACT, ano, ikakatakot mo naman kung wala ka namang ginagawang masama, di ba? Bakit katakot if you're a member of that uh, act? Presidential spokesperson Salvador Panelo, meanwhile, says the ACT members should not worry if they are not doing anything illegal. If the PNP is investigating or monitoring certain people, Panelo says it is those who are conniving with the communist rebels to overthrow the government. Residents in several towns in the Bicol region continue to ask for assistance. Following the onslaught of Typhoon Osman, my Bermudez tells us why. It has been more than a week since Typhoon Osman widely devastated the Bicol region. UNTV News and Rescue Team visited Tiwi Albay, one of the most affected by the calamity due to series of landslides that occurred in the area. Many residents still rely on food packs given by the government and private groups. Aside from this, there's no clean water supply in the area. Kasi yung tubig namin na yung source namin ng tubig na sira halos talagang nawas out sa ako nga nananawagan na sana yung may tumulong man lang na anong maayos yung ano namin source ng tubig. Tatay Rolando tells us how difficult it is to go up and down the stairway just to get water supply. Mahirap talaga. Kaya kailangan kailangan may dito tubig o pang-inom panlaba. Well, Nanay Marivic remains positive despite the challenges they are facing. Simula nung masira yung tubo ng gripo namin, dito na kami from taas, punta dito sa baba. Napakahirap talaga ngayon ang sitwasyon namin dito. Sobrang hirap. Oh, nakangiti kahit pagod, kahit malayong nilalakad. Okay lang, kaya namin to. Restoring electricity supply also becomes a challenge in Barangay Misibis. Some rely on generators for rent with a 20 peso charging fee for phones. The local government meantime assured the public that they are expediting their measures of sending reliefs to the victims of Typhoon Osman and has asked for immediate assistance. Humihi po kami ng tulong uh, doon sa mga na, na-biktima ng landslides. Uh, 
kailangan po namin ng food food packs, too big, uh, of course housing materials, uh, mat, uh, kung ano pong maibibigay na tulong, including uh, uh, used clothing or My Bermudez, UNTV News and Rescue, TV Albay. Tropical Depression Usman left at least 4.2 billion pesos worth of total damage in agriculture and infrastructure according to the National Disaster Risk Reduction and Management Council. In its latest report, Usman's onslaught damaged 3 billion pesos in infrastructure and more than 900 million pesos worth of crops in Calabarzon, Maropa, Bicol, and Eastern Visayas. The storm also damaged more than 10,000 houses and killed at least 126 people. 75 individuals were injured while 26 others remained missing. Top teams, uh, PNP responders and AFP Cavaliers advances to the next round after getting the automatic slots in the UNTV Cup Season 7 semi-finals. Bernard Dadis tells us why. The AFP Cavaliers remain on top after routing Malacanang PSC Kamaon 98-87 in a heart-thundering match in the ongoing UNTV Cup Season 7 eliminations held at the Gatorade Hoop Center in Mandaluyong on Sunday. Darwin Cordero and Wilfred Casulia led the AFP to clinching their 8th victory of the season after scoring 22 and 15 points respectively. Sabi ko sa kanila, Andiyan kahit alam kong uh, hirap tayo sa endurance ngayon, gawin pa rin natin yung best. Kasi may sistema naman tayo eh. Diba? Hindi naman tayo yung magkakasama lang na kailan lang, matagal na tayo magkakasama. Sabi ko, gawin lang pa rin natin yung dapat natin gawin. Kulang yung ano namin, uh, effort sa defense. Kasi inayaan namin pumutok yung mga shooter nila. For the first quarter, first half, maganda yung percentage ng uh, AFP sa labas. Kaya siguro, nagkaroon lang kumpiyansa, lumoboy lamang sa amin. The latest win earned the Cavaliers an automatic slot in the semifinals along with top 2 Season 5 champion PNP responders. Malacanang meanwhile nestled at the third spot with 6 wins and 3 losses. AAP head coach Corporal Sani Manukat says they will immediately embark on a grueling training to prepare for the semis. Uh, hindi kami magpapahinga eh. Sabi ko sa kanila, pahinga lang tayo bukas. Tuesday, matsyada tayo. Meanwhile, the PITC Global Traders climbed to the fifth spot after narrowly defeating NHA Builders 81-78. Rod Basalion and Hadi Porto were hailed as the best players of the game after scoring 20 and 21 points respectively. I'll give it to the boys, they don't wanna lose. The recent defeat has placed NHA builders at the bottom of the standings with 4-5 win-loss record. They are set to face off with Malacanang PSC Kamao when the quarterfinals kick off on Sunday. Bernard Dadis, UNTV News and Rescue, Philippines. Up next on Y News. Presidential Anti-Corruption Commission probes three cabinet members over corruption allegations. 2019 senatorial aspirant, lawyer Romulo Macalintal, eyes changes to benefit system for senior citizens. Even if the race is paid out, everything will be alright. And singing hopefuls Jayco Elad and Antoinette Amorin get slots in a Camp Moy Ortiz Top 4 Wish Coveries. Thank you for keeping me company in the first part of Y News. More reasons behind the stories with Angela Lagunsad and William Theo after this quick break. I'm Rina Villamor Camara. Good evening. Welcome back to Wine News. We picked up from where Rina Villamore camera left off. I am Angela Lagunzad and here are the headlines. Suspects in Batokabe murder case detail their participation in the crime. 
three cabinet members of President Rodrigo Duterte now under investigation over corruption complaints. Eh, may nahirapan na ako eh. Walang, walang di na ako kumuha ngayon eh. Kasi ang layo ng paikot-ikot na ako eh. Naubos na yung pamasahe ko eh. And LTO's online medical certificate system draws flack over alleged delays and inconveniences. Authorities are beginning to put the pieces on the killing of Ako Bicol Party List of Representative Rodel Batokabe together. My Bermudez will tell us why. Three suspects in the slay of Ako Bicol Party List Representative Rodel Batokabe personally subscribed to their affidavits before Albay Provincial Prosecutor's Office. The second gunman identified by the PNP said he served as a lookout of main gunman Yuson and then consecutively shot Batokabe and his aide using caliber 40 and caliber 45 guns. Si Congressman Iyang Inuna, pangalawa si yung police. Naparil ko po yung dalawa. Si Virtu Patokabe, tapos si yung police. Pinadaan ang kristiyan ng dalawang potok. He added that he tried to prevent the main gunman from shooting the lawmaker since he was already dead. Sabi ko, Romil, huwag mo nang patay kasi patay na yun. Mm -hmm. Hindi pa yung sinatigil. On the other hand, Muelia, identified as an accessory to the crime, and one of those who allegedly planned the crime, said he is an employee of Mayor Baldo. Uh -huh. Nasa payroll ka ni Mayor? Yes, ma'am. Yuson, who first shot Batokabe and Diaz, meantime fears for his and his family's life, and said he wants to be under the Witness Protection Program, or WPP, of the Justice Department. Gusto ko po. Kung nangangamba rin ako, siyempre ta, hindi ko alam yung... Kung anong mangyari sa akin, ta, gusto ko yung, yung buhay ko, yung siguro dad man po ma'am. Ta, gusto ko rin yung pamilya ng, sa, gusto ko rin na masecure man sila, ta, hindi ko rin alam ang buhay nila kung may magbanta sa amin. According to their legal counsel, there's no intimidation used to press the three men to testify in the case. Itong mga sumuko, gusto nila magbigay ng malaya at kusang loob na salaysay. Ang tawag dito... Kung sa English, extrajudicial confession. Eh lahat naman sila nagsasabing gusto namin pong magsabi ng katotohanan. Six out of seven suspects are now under the custody of PNP except Daraga Albay Mayor Carlwin Baldo. A warrant of arrest has not yet been issued against him. Mayor Alvin Baldo, sana po harapin mo itong katotohanan na pagutos mo sa amin. Panindingan mo ito na ginawa mo ito na ikaw talaga yung pinaka mastermind nito. Si Tuping ang nakakaram kang kung sino ang mastermind, kung sino ang nagbayad kasi siya po ang kausap ni Mayor Baldo. UNTV News and Rescue Team tried to get the side of Mayor Baldo but has refused to allow interviews for now. May Bermudez, UNTV News and Rescue, Legazpi Albay. The Philippine National Police is confident of having a strong case against the suspects in the killing of a Cobico party list representative Rodel Batokabe and a security aide SPO2 Orlando Diaz. Let's find out why from Lea Ilaga. Results of the ballistic exam conducted by the Philippine National Police Crime Laboratory confirmed that the bullet slugs and shells found at the area where Congressman Rodel Batokabe and his police escort SPO1 Orlando Diaz were killed belonged to one of the suspects, Henry Yuson. PNP Chief Police Director General Oscar Albayalde says the slugs and shell matched with the Norinco caliber 40 pistol registered under the name of Yuson. Albayalde believes that the new development will further boost their case against the alleged mastermind, Daraga Mayor Carlin Baldo and six other suspects in the crime. The 11 shells na 40 at saka limang slugs ay nagmatch dun sa issue or dun sa license firearms ni Yuson na sinabi niya na ginamit niya dun sa crime scene. So nag-positive yan, nagmatch according to the findings of the crime lab. So that will now boost our case. Yuson, in his affidavit, admitted to using his own licensed firearm when a caliber 45 pistol which they bought for the assassination jam. 
According to PNP Records, the registration of Yushon's Norinco caliber 40 has been expired since 2015. He also admitted in his affidavit that after Batokabe he then shot at the lawmaker's police escort SPO Diaz. Yuson said he also sustained gunshot wounds to the arm and to the side as somebody from the lawmakers and exchanged fire with them but he couldn't verify who. Albayaldi says they will continue with the investigation even after six of the suspects surrendered to check if there are other individuals involved in the crime. Hindi namin sinasara yung investigation dito. In fact, meron din tayong uh, tinitignan, meron din kung bakit uh, nasa mas bato itong dalawa. Di ba? That could be probably kung sino yung mga kumukupkut sa kanila. Di ba? Pwedeng civilian, pwedeng politician. These are all part of our investigation. Kaya open ang investigation namin dito. Leia Ilagan, UNTV News and Rescue, Camp Krame. In other news, the Commission on Elections or COMELEC disqualifies more than 40 senatorial aspirants. COMELEC will also limit the campaign expenditures of candidates on social media. Aiko Miguel will tell us why. More than 40 of the 152 who filed their certificates of candidacy for the senatorial race have been disqualified by the Commission on Elections. Comelec explained that they belong to those who are called nuisance candidates as decided by the law department and the Comelec and Bank. The poll body added that these candidates were also disqualified because they are not capable to do campaigning. Seven of those who filed their COCs also voluntarily withdrew their candidacy. But until now, Comelec cannot issue the official list of candidates yet as they are still deciding on some filed candidacy. As of last week, more than 40 uh, disqualifications were handed out. Um, but uh, because of differences in when these decisions were received, wala tayong isang araw para sa finality. Kasi bibilangin mo yung finality based on when the decision was actually received by the party. No? According to Jimenez, Comelec will issue the list before the printing of ballots begins on the third week of January. Meanwhile, the poll body is working on the rules to limit the campaign expenditures of candidates on social media. The poll body targets to issue the rules before the start of the campaign period on February 12. According to Jimenez, they will monitor the campaign expenditures on social media of candidates with advertisements. We will, however, Make sure that whatever draft regulation that we have will respect uh, the individual's right to free expression. Ang babantayan natin ay kung paano nagagamit yung social media um, sa konteksto ng gastusin. Magkano ang ginagastos ng mga kampanya para dito para hindi siya maging paraan para magtago ng maraming pera na nagiging unfair kasi nga may spending limit tayo. Comelec clarified that candidates are free to post on social media when campaign period starts as long as they will follow the rules in accordance with Republic Act 9006 or the Fair Elections Act setting a clean and fair elections. Aiko Miguel, UNTV News and Rescue, Manila. Three cabinet members of President Rodrigo Duterte are currently being investigated by the Presidential Anti-Corruption Commission. Rosalie Cos tells us why. The Presidential Anti-Corruption Commission or PACC is looking into complaints on alleged corruption against Labor Secretary Silvestre Bello III and former Customs Chief and now Technical Education and Skills Development Authority Director General Isidro La Peña. PACC Commissioner Manuelito Luna says an investigation was launched in 2018 on Bellio for allegedly accepting bribes from a recruitment agency and a businesswoman. While the role of La Peña is being questioned on the smuggled billions of pesos worth of shabu that were concealed in magnetic lifters. <laughs> Labor Secretary Bello has maintained he is not involved in any illegal practices. Aside from Bello and La Peña, the PACC is also investigating National Commission on Indigenous People Chairman Leonor Oralde Quintayo for corruption complaints. 
Presidential spokesperson Salvador Panelo says Malacanang will await the body's official findings and recommendations for President Rodrigo Duterte. However, Panelo clarified that they will still remain in the cabinet while the probe is underway. Malacanang also insists that President Duterte will not consider friendship or allies in his anti-corruption drive. You must remember that the president's policy ever since, there are no sacred cows in this administration. You violate the law regardless of your status, whether you're a friend or ally or a political adversary or a relative or a friend or a fraternity brother, will I latch on. You violate the law, you are accountable. Rosa Licoz, UNTV News and Rescue, Malacanã. The Land Transportation Office has begun its online submission of medical certificate for drivers applying and renewing their licenses. However, the implementation of the new system drew flack from the applicants. Here's why from Robbie de Guzman. The Land Transportation Office has started accepting medical certificates online from applicants for student permits, driver's licenses, and license renewals. Memorandum Circular 2018-2157, however, requires applicants to secure a medical certificate from clinics accredited by the LTO. LTO Regional Director Jojo Guadi says such policy is to ensure that the medical certificates are authentic and that the applicant is indeed qualified to drive. Kasi po, ang dami pong mga instances na yung mga clinic, wala naman talagang doktor na nandoon. Either secretary lang ang nandoon or kung sino-sino lang. At may mga pre-signed na medical certificate. And then, bit-bit ng tao to, yung medical certificate na inisyo ng medical clinic ko, no? And then, gagali nila. And then, based on that, may LTO will be issuing a driver's license relying in good faith na yun yung tao talaga ay fit to drive, samantalang hindi pala. Under the new directive, the accredited doctor must transmit online the soft copy of the medical certificate of a specific applicant through his or her own biometrics data, encoded and registered in the agency's IT system. The required namin ngayon na dapat lahat po ng, ng uh, mag-a-apply ng license ngayon or mag-re-renew ay dadaan po sa isang prospect proseso na ang talagang titingin ko sa kanila ay doktor. At para makasigurado po kami na talagang may doktor, hindi ko uh, kung sino-sino lang ang nasa clinic dapat, bawat transaction po ay kinakailangan ng fingerprint ng doktor through a biometrics para makikita po yung resulta ngayon sa district office. But disappointed clients vented out their anger on social media. On LTO's official Facebook page, many are complaining because only few clinics are LTO accredited and so they have to endure that long queue of applicants just to get their medical certificate. Crispin de Regla was dismayed because he went to a clinic only to find out that it was not yet accredited by the LTO. Eh, may nahirapan na ako eh. Walang walang hindi na ako kumuha ngayon eh. Kasi ang layo ng paikot-ikot na ako eh. Naubos na yung pamasahe ko eh. The LTO admits that they have not yet registered in their IT system all of their accredited clinics. Nevertheless, the agency says it is doing its best to encode everything in their database of accredited clinics before the day ends. The LTO has apologized for the inconveniences that the public experienced during the process. Robbie de Guzman, UNTV News and Rescue. Senatorial hopeful Attorney Romulo Macalintal eyes changes to benefit system for senior citizens if he wins in his bid to get a Senate seat in May 2019 midterm elections. Ray Pelayo tells us why. Veteran election lawyer Romulo Macalintal wants to enter politics to give voice to one of the most vulnerable sectors in the country, the senior citizens. He is considered one of the most prominent election lawyers in the country for representing high-ranking officials of the government, including former presidents Gloria Arroyo and Benigno Aquino III. Makalintal said in the program Get It Straight with Daniel Razon, many times he was offered a position in the government, but he refused as he wanted a position decided by the people. In October 2018, Makalintal formalized his bid in the 2019 senatorial race. Given a chance to serve, the veteran lawyer said he will work immediately to amend the law on senior citizens' benefits. Dapat ang discount ng mga senior citizens pagdating natin na 70 years old, 
30% ang discount. Pagdating ng 80 years old, dapat 40% ang discount. Pagdating natin ng 90 and above, dapat 50% na ang discount natin. Sapagat habang tayo tumatanda, kailangan-kailangan natin ng gamot at medical services. Among other issues he wants to improve are the 100,000 cash gift for centenarians, discount on electric bills for senior citizens, and establishment of Senior Citizens Common Fund for the benefit of indigent senior citizens. Kung 7 million lang na senior citizen araw-araw ang bibigay ng 50 centavos, mm -hmm. that would be 3.5 million a day, a day uh, mga 90 million uh, a month, mm -hmm. and 1.2 billion a year. Where will, where will that go? Para so, papanakaw mo na naman. Hindi. Oh. Kailangan ito ay pamamahalaan ng talagang mga reputable people. He also eyes scrapping all monetary dues intended for overseas Filipino workers. Attorney Makalintal hopes that he would receive enough support for his senatorial bid not only from the elderly sector but also from his clients as a lawyer to be able to secure a position in the Senate. Ray Pilayo, UNTV, News and Rescue, Quezon City. Two wish coveries from South Luzon are now a step closer to their dreams of making it big in the Philippine music industry. Leslie Long Bowen tells us why. Wishcoveries from South Luzon battled their way to the semi-finals in last night's one-on-one -on -one showdown in Wishcovery Season 2, The Singer and the Song. Composer Wishcoverer Moy Ortiz was tasked to choose between Jayco Elad and Russell Prudente. But I chose to go with um, with Jacob, dahil mas polished ang vocals. Ito na talaga ang time para baguhin ko ang sarili ko dahil uh, yan, nakapasok ako dito. Two belters, Antoinette Amorin and Shaira Mainit, showcase their singing prowess next. That's why I chose Wish Favre Antoinette dahil for me, mas believable yung interpretation niya at performance ng pangako. Hindi ko po expected na makapasok ko. Gawa po ng nagkamali nga po ako nung una pong play po ng music po. Pero thankful pa rin po ako na nakapasok. Pinili po ako ni Sir Mato. The top four wish coveries of all camps will be completed this week and start preparing for the semi-finals. Leslie Longbowan, UNTV News and Rescue, Philippines. Up next on Y News. Malaysia's King Mohammed abdicates throne, cutting short his five-year term. My name is uh, and I'm still in the room. I have no choice. Uh, they said I have to go tomorrow and uh, no one can help me right now. Human rights group urges Thailand not to return Saudi teenager allegedly fleeing abuse from her family. And a Japanese schoolgirl set to be the world's youngest go play. And those are the reasons behind the stories in the second part of our newscast. Why News returns with William Pino. I'm Angela Lagunsad. Good evening.